Hi, welcome to this video. We're going to discuss now about the quick check multiple choice of chapter 27, the basic tools of finance. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, if the interest rate is zero, then 100 to be paid in 10 years has a present value that is then here we have these four options then we are going to have a look look how to um, how to proceed to solve this this question so first we need to know that this is the question that we develop during this chapter this is the this is the final value which is exactly equal to the present value times one plus the interest rate elevated to the n, which is the periods. So here we need to verify or we need to collect by the uh, by the present value. So then we need to find that um, that variable. So then we're going to collect for that term. So this one is a is equal to b, so b is equal to a. I just reordered that this one that is in the right I put in the left. And this that is in the right, in the left, we put in the right, exactly the same. Then this expression one plus r elevated to n, this is multiplying, so it goes to the other side, uh, divided. So then we just replace the values. We know that the final value should be 100, one plus the interest rate, but the interest rate is zero, and then elevated to 10, which is the period of uh, 10 years, then we have 100. So then the answer should be B, exactly 100. Second, it's exactly the same, just with the difference that we have here, 10%, uh, uh, and then we here we have the future value in two years of 100, today is so again here we have the the equation so then we just replace by present value is exactly 100 1 plus the interest rate the interest rate is 10 percent so 10 over 100 it goes to 0 0.1 so then we have 1.1 elevated to 2 we have 1.21 multiplying by 100 we have final value 121 with this which is exactly the answer third if the interest rate is the 10 percent then the present value of 100 to be paid in two years is so again we have the same equation we already know the present value that we already um, found in the first exercise so then we have here that the present value 100 to be paid in two years and the interest rate is 10. So then it should be 0 0.1. So then it should be 100 over 1.21. So this one we have exactly 82.64 or approximately B equal to 83. Fourth, the ability of insurance to spread risk is limited by risk aversion and moral hazard, risk aversion adverse selection, moral hazard and adverse selection, risk aversion only. So first it's important important to know that risk aversion is something how you uh, face the risk. If you are like risk lover it means that you you love taking too much risk. If you, from the other side, you are risk averse, it means that you don't like too much risk. You're not. A, you are not a risky person. So then, um, this is more a characteristic of every ev everyone. And here, the important concepts. Here, adverse selection. Adverse selection is something um, related that high risk person is more likely to apply for insurance than a low risk risk person. So then. Um, Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, they cannot they cannot find easily if that person is maybe a risky one. So maybe, for example, in health insurance, people that are tempted to take it uh, are people that they know that maybe they will face a disease or something, and then insurance could cover that. Other important thing is the moral hazard. So. Sometimes people, when they have an insurance, they are not as careful 
as without insurance so maybe for example if you have a home insurance and maybe you don't have any uh, imagine that you don't have any insurance in at your home so maybe you don't you you care too much about about maybe fire about maybe water flood or something related but if you don't have insurance maybe you don't care too much because you know that the insurance will cover that risk so then adverse selection and uh and moral hazard should be should be the issue then the benefit of diversification when constructing a portfolio is that it can eliminate speculative bubbles risk aversion firm specific risk or market risk so you can reduce firm specific risk here actually is the relationship between risk and between numbers of stocks of portfolio when you increase more uh, stocks in your portfolio automatically you are reducing the firm specific however the market risk uh, remains so even uh, we can say that you cannot eliminate however you can reduce the firm specific risk so would be more uh, C. The last question, according to the efficient market hypothesis, we have changes in stock prices are impossible to predict from public information. Excessive diversification can reduce investors' expected portfolio returns. C. The stock market moves based on the changing animal spirits of investors or actively managed mutual funds should give higher returns than index funds. It's important to know that we read throughout the books that the prices follow a random walk. It means that no one can predict. So then impossible to predict with available information. Otherwise, everybody will earn money. So changes in stock prices are impossible to predict from public information, even that public information reflect the real prices or close to the real prices. Okay, I hope it has uh, helped to you. We're going to go to the exercises as usual and have a great day or night. Bye-bye.